All right. Um, so we are using the meeting feature of Zoom. Um, if you have any questions, my friend Andy is going to be watching the chat room. Um, just drop in the chat. If you don't mind, please mute your uh, microphones, uh, uh, but drop any questions you have in the chat. If there's something that's a little bit more elaborate of a question, um, you and I could talk offline outside of this uh, demo um, and I can get into uh, deeper specifics. But if you have any quick questions, just drop them in the chat. Uh, I would like to thank our sponsor, um, Apex Systems. Uh, they've been a great sponsor of ours for the past few years and we're happy that they renew with us again this year. They are a, a consultancy and um, they have lots of clients here in uh, Northeast Ohio and they place project managers um, as one of their uh, specialty disciplines. Uh, we have a lot of learning opportunities with the chapter. Uh, specifically, we have partnerships with uh, Project Bytes, Peak Business, uh, who offer certification courses um, at a discount for our chapter members. We have a relationship also with Velociteach uh, that have instructor-led courses and online courses, also at a discount for our chapter members. Great opportunity to do continuous, uh, continual um, personal development and also uh, certification. They have a wide array of certification offerings, both Peak Business and Velociteach. Uh, we have a job board. Actually, there's one company that's hiring a few um, positions. So if you visit our uh, current chapter website and go to careers and then job board, um, you will uh, see what we have to offer. All right, so let's get to the meat of it. So we're going to talk about electronic whiteboarding. Now, uh, many of us... Um, not everyone, but many of us uh, have moved to working from home or remote. Many of us before the pandemic were in the office, but had remote teams. Some people working from home, some people working in different cities. Um, I know per personal experience, you know, when we had a physical whiteboard and we would brainstorm on it, at the end of the meeting, we would take pictures of the whiteboard and email it to people. But what happens is if you're not in the room, you're not as engaged as, um, uh, as as you should be right. Um, so, when with the advent of these digital whiteboarding tools over the last few years, you know, just like Zoom and these other products uh, started to evolve, whiteboarding also evolved over the last two three years. There's a, a bunch of really good tools out there. Um, Mural is one we're going to cover today. Microsoft Whiteboard. Google has a product called Jamboard. So if you're already in the Google workspace or G Suite, um, they've got a decent tool out there too. Uh, Miro, M-I-R-O, our own Juan Carlos Gamara uh, gave a presentation on that a few months ago. So that's available if you wanted to look for that. It's also a really good tool. Lucid Spark, Vibe, and I'm sure I could probably add a dozen more to this list. These are the most common ones out there. There's new ones getting added all the time. In addition, if you're using Zoom or using, um, let's say, WebEx, there is a built-in whiteboard in those tools that you can share. Limited in functionality, but basically, if you um, want something that you can use a marker and mark on a whiteboard, uh, those tools are great. But what I'm going to show you today is a, um, two products that are a little bit ahead of that. It's not just for drawing. It's also for collaborating, brainstorming. Um, and, and their ability to share that information with others is wonderful. All right, so common features of these whiteboard tools, uh, drawing, sketching, um, web interface for universal access. So in, in fact, the web version of these products tend to be the strongest versions. Uh, a lot of these guys will have um, apps that you can install on Windows or Mac or your iPad or your Android tablet or, or on your phones. The web versions tend to be the more robust in feature set. 
Um, and they're probably the most ubiquitous as far as access. So anybody with a, a good browser, Chrome, uh, Firefox, Safari, Edge can get to these tools and, and really um, work with them well. Uh, and, and a lot of these tools are cloud-based, which means you don't have to worry about storing or saving stuff locally. These whiteboards are saved in the cloud and accessible later. Um, yeah, everyone's done the, the post-it note on the whiteboard thing. Yep, these guys do post-it notes too. Uh, digital ones, um, images, um, they allow for collaboration. So more than um, one marker at a time, I'm sure some of you remember being in the office and there would be only one marker and um, you'd fight over the marker to see who can write on the board here. Anybody could write as long as the facilitator lets it, lets them do it. Um, and then you can share that whiteboard after the fact with a link, right? So that, oh, I wonder what that happened. So no more taking a picture of the whiteboard and emailing it out. Um, you can keep that whiteboard or export it to a file, which we'll talk about um, for later use. Okay. All right, let's start with Mural. So um, I, I kind of started off by saying um, Mural, um, I think, was founded about four ish years ago. Um, I think the, uh, the founding company is based out of Buenos Aires. Um, the URL to get to it is mural.co, not com, uh, co. Um, it's available. You can get to the whiteboard on, on, on the browser. Uh, there's also an app that's available inside of Microsoft Teams, inside of Zoom. So you can snap, uh, call it snap or add an app inside those tools. Um, so you can collaborate and kind of keep it self-contained within that team or chat or that meeting. Um, adding those apps to Teams or Zoom need to be approved by a system admin. You can't just go out, well, most companies like mine, we lock everything down. So we don't allow people just to go grab any old app and install it. Um, it's a whiteboarding tool with tons of features. I, I'm only gonna probably scratch the surface today because of time, but wow, there's a lot of stuff inside of Miro. Um, you can share that board with other people. There's templates and frameworks, so you don't have to write everything from scratch. Um, and you can also export if you want a digital copy um, as a PNG or a PDF. Um, how Mural is organized and shared um, from an organization perspective, when I either purchase a license or use the free uh, edition, um, I get a workspace as a user. Um, a workspace can have many rooms. Um, uh, you want to use the analogy of the workspace is kind of like a building and the rooms, if you could think about a, a room, um, a building with lots of conference rooms with lots of whiteboards. So a room can be set up for a project team, operations team, whatever, a work team. Um, rooms could be public or private, or, or I should say limited or private. Um, but each room can have multiple murals. So think about a physical room with a whiteboard on every wall. Um, you can have unlimited number of murals within each room um, and then multiple rooms within a workspace. So that's pretty cool. So you're not limited to just one. Um, the sharing capability facilitators are the owners of the murals. So when I initiate a meeting, I'm the facilitator if I've created the board. Um, I can delegate facilitation to other participants. So I'm not the only facilitator, but by default, the creator of the mural is the facilitator. Um, so that's the facilitator role, probably like the full owner, full control. Members um, are mural users with accounts in the same domain. So if you buy uh, the enterprise edition of mural, you can share across your xyz.com peers as long as they have you have enough licenses and they can become members and they have easier I'll call it single sign on access if you set it up that way to get the mural so you don't you don't have an extra login uh, there's folks called guests they're existing customers partners and vendors that collaborate on work they don't necessarily have their own license for mural or their own accounts but they can come in and they're folks that could access your board as long as you let them. 
and then visitors are one-time participants. So the yeah, one time I want this person um, to come in and look at the board, they're outside the company. Um, you can limit the duration of the, the value, um, the access to that link, that link to the board um, so that it's not available permanently. Lots of templates in Miro. We've got a blank <laughs> template. So if you just want to start with a white wall, you can. There's brainstorming, retrospectives, Kanban. Um, so for visual work management, problem solving, action planning, icebreakers. Oh my gosh, there's so many templates in there. So you don't have to start from scratch, but if you want to, you can. Um, there's a whole bunch of advanced features in Mural. You can do voting. So basically you, you put stickies on the board and you highlight them and say, hey, vote. And you can have people on your team vote for the best sticky or vote for the best idea or whatever. Um, there's polling, you can ask questions. There's a timer feature. So if you wanna do a timed brainstorm, you can say, hey, for the next five minutes, I want everyone to throw a post-it up on the board um, or right on the board with your ideas. And then the timer would, would sound off. Um, at the end of the timer, uh, it would sound like the noise you hear on an airplane when they tell you to put your trade tables back up. It's that same ding ding or ding dong <laughs> that, that's here on the plane. Um, so that's nice. Um, you can summon people. You know how uh, a lot of folks will get distracted or they'll play around in different parts of the board. And, and as a facilitator, you can say, get over here. Let's, and then you could force everybody to look at what you're looking at as a facilitator. Um, you can also, and I'll show you in a minute, you can actually see where people are. So if they are um, in a different section of the board, maybe that's okay. Maybe you have brainstorming, you give everybody a different section of the board, or maybe they're just scrolling around and, and they got lost. You can um, see where they're at and bring them back if you need to. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about Miro and Microsoft Whiteboard, it's kind of like an unlimited size. Like you can go pan right pretty far, pan down. With a physical whiteboard, you're limited to the physical space. Mural and, and Microsoft Whiteboard give you a little bit more of a unlimited canvas. There's a limit, of course, but it's it's a huge canvas. Um, you can lock the mural board, prevent audience updates during the meeting. So if you wanted to show off some things, you can lock the whole board and then unlock it when you want people to contribute ideas. You can pan Zoom, you can get reactions. People could put the little emojis on the screen. Um, and you could do a private mode for any kind of anonymous brainstorming or voting. Um, so you could put it into private mode, the board, let people contribute so no one can see who contributed what while they're contributing, and then take it out of private mode. You could still see who contributed what by right-clicking on a post-it or whatever, but um, we'll, we'll show you that in a second. So let me, let's try it. Um, I, this link is, pretty long. I'm going to drop in in the chat here in a second. I want to just make sure that I got everything cooking right. So bear with me. Um, I've already logged in. Um, I have a free account right now through my role on the chapter. Um, with the free account, you get up to five murals uh, for free. Um, and you know that also means like if you've created five and you delete one, you have four, you can still create one more. It's just you can only have five active boards at, at a time at the free level. Once you get into the paid tiers, and I'm not going to get into pricing today, you can get more than five and, um, and you know cloud storage and you can upload um, your own content library. There's a lot more features in the paid level. So I'm going to show you what's in the free level, which is pretty robust. I've already created a board for today, so I'm just gonna open it. You notice that I can create a mural from scratch. I can look at existing murals. I can um, select a template. Mural does a great job with education. They've got a whole series of webinars. They've got a whole bunch of tutorials baked into the tool. Um, you can go out to YouTube. There's a lot of great, um, uh, videos out there too. So if there's something that you hear me saying didn't resonate with you, um, there's tons of ways to learn this stuff. This is a pretty robust tool. So um, it's impossible for me to get through it in a half hour and teach you everything on it because 
it's just so much and practice makes perfect right so you need to play around on your own so i'm gonna go ahead and open up this um mural all right so um let me About that, I wanted to hide the toolbar here. All right, I'm gonna have to resize that. Um, all right, so here's the mural. Now, this outline I built based on what was on the screen, and I'm gonna show you in a little bit um, how to build an outline. Um, what's great about an outline is you can have a facilitated session where you can create sections of your board and then create an outline of those sections of the board and then walk people through the different sections during your meeting. So if you start your meeting with a brainstorm or an icebreaker, you can create a section of your whiteboard to do that. And then if you want to cover a topic, you can take them to a different section of the board. And again, this board is wide and super long, so no physical constraint. Uh, truthfully, obviously you can create other murals, uh, but the canvas is pretty wide. I'm gonna take you over to this brainstorm one that I created, and I am going to go back to my slide deck. Um, your mileage may vary. So what you're gonna learn here is that um, actually, let me just do it from here. All right, so I'm going to create, I'm going to go to the share sheet here. I'm going to go to visitors. I am going to copy this link. Uh, I am going to run the risk here that some of you are going to go into this board and go crazy. Um, I'm going to try to summon you. Um, I, I may lock the board if uh, you guys go crazy on me. Um, but um, what you'll find is people that join your meeting and go to the board. Some will have smartphones and can't get their way around. They can't see the board, can't get at it. Some people have some quirky configuration of their browser and can't get to the board. Uh, some people are just, um, um, what do you call it, uh, nervous about digital tools, so they may not accurately use the board. So you're going to have to have some grace and patience at the beginning. I would, before you have your first formal mural session with anybody, do some practice sessions with a smaller group just to make sure you as a facilitator are comfortable and the participants there are comfortable with the technology. So you don't want um, your first time in with 50 people like I am today uh, watching you um, uh, fumble around and have them have technical issues. So I am going to go into the chat I am going to drop this link in. I know it's big and ugly. Uh, for those of you that want to participate, go ahead and click on that link in the chat. Um, it's going to, I see people already joining, um, which is great. Um, if you are nervous about getting in here, that's fine. Just keep watching. Um, we are going to, uh, look at that. Wow, a lot of you are joining. That's excellent. And just by opening it up like that, yeah, you notice that mural as people join, um, if they already have an account, they could join as their account name. If they're a visitor, they get to pick an animal. <laughs> so that kind of makes it a cute kind of uh, way to come in. So we got visiting birds and bears and chickens and foxes and all that. We've already got people dropping things on the brainstorm board. Um, so what, what I'd like you to do, um, for those of you comfortable, double click on this, this white area in the top left and just um, write, type out something about a vacation that you have coming up this year, like a location. Like if you're going to Disney or Florida or Alaska or whatever, just drop, drop a card out there. We'll just do some brainstorming. Now, um, if you're seeing what I'm seeing, um, 
you, you can get kind of uh, at least get kind of nauseous seeing all these names flying by. What you can do as a facilitator is you can. Um, why won't it let me? Yeah, I can broadcast my own cursor. I can turn off looking at other people's cursors. That's what uh, that's what you're seeing now. So now I don't see all the flying names. I just see the cards. Um, I, if I want to go back to seeing that again, I turn it on, right? And I can turn it off. Now what I can do here, and what's great, um, you'll notice that um, I have this little Zoom box here. Let me close the outline for a second. See the Zoom box here? So this area is where I'm focused on. And I can actually move my view to that corner. Uh, what I notice is people were dropping cards all over the place instead of staying in the corner. So again, that's something that over time, you'll have to teach your participants, hey, stay in this corner. Don't go all over the place. Um, but I notice people are selecting and drawing and, and uh, misbehaving, which I expected in this session. So. Um, but here's that, I can summon people. And now what happens is now everybody's back in the corner with me. Now, again, they could still escape and go out to farther corners. I'd have to keep resummoning them. The focus here, you notice in this brainstorming, we had, um, now you can notice, and this is, this is part of the learning for today. This is gonna happen to you. Um, Um, so we've got Disney, Mexico, Hawaii, wishing to go on vacation, Colorado. Somebody drew a picture of an alien here. <clears throat> so that's cool, right? Um, so uh, that's really great thing. So each one of you were able to either draw or drop a post-it on there. You can resize those post-its. Here on the, on the left-hand side, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Let's see if I can lock. Yep, I don't, I don't see the lock here, but um, if you could hold off on creating any other cards for me. Um, I wanna show you, I'm gonna go over here. All right. And as a facilitator, anybody can resize these cards, right? Now I'm gonna, on the toolbar on the left, there's a text tool. So if I click on it, I could pick a different type of post-it note, a three by three, a five by three, a circle. They have multiple colors. I could um, create a text box. So uh, what those two things I just deleted a second ago were text boxes. I can do post-its. Um, I could put a comment. So if I am brainstorming with somebody and I want to do a follow-up on something, so on this nothing planned yet post-it, I'm going to put a comment. And I'm going to say, um, let's plan something next week. So what will happen uh, and it works better um, if we're all on the same network or on the same thing, but I can at mention that person and then schedule a follow up. So if I do a send, all right, it'll actually track all the comments we've made on any post its um, uh, in the board here. The other thing I'm noticing people are still super excited to use this tool. I see they're still changing cards. Um, so on this nothing planned yet post it. I can change the color. Like if I go, you know what, I'd rather blue. Um, I can change the, I could resize it. You can do it manually. Um, I could change the font. I can make the font bigger, smaller. Uh, and I can change the border of it or add a border. Lots of good tools there. Um, so would you notice with this brainstorming, again, you need to set the rules with your team when you conduct the brainstorming. Hey, just drop post-its, don't draw on the board. Uh, but those things um, are possible. So I'm gonna take you to the next section here. 
Um, so there's this thing called oh, icons and me? images. Okay, um, perfect. I'm sorry. Um, Good. Um, I was having a weird thing happen with my mic where it kept flopping between uh, muted and not muted without me pressing anything. So. Okay. All right. So um, images, icons, and images. So there is um, this tool here, icons. You can search for an icon. You know what's interesting is they have um, even Star Wars and Disney themed and Marvel, I believe, in here. So if I wanted an R two D two, I could drop drop him in there. Um, I could just look for people. Right, so they've got a really huge uh, icon library. You can also go to images. They use Bing um, as their image uh, library. And um, you can also hook your, if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud account, you can hook your Creative Cloud account to Mural um, and then search there. So here I can say um, um, Jedi and not to be Star Wars focused, but Okay, so here's uh, right. So I can drop images in there, GIFs. I can import them from um, internally off my hard drive. So that's pretty cool. All right. So I'm gonna go back to my outline. I kind of um, you can hide and show things in your um, on your board. So I've got this wall of work thing here, which is pretty cool. The let me zoom it smaller so you can whoops so you can see it all. So I, for those of you that are used to um, Kanban's or um, there's a template already for uh, a wall of work, you can get to it um, from the template library. Here's a backlog doing done. So if you're facilitating daily standups or if you have a a project or operations team that you're leading and you want to kind of look at their work. Again, here's the board, and then people could drop their post-its, and then you can move post-its from the backlog to doing the done, and then document progress along the way. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to show you at the end here how to create an item on the outline. But I can hide and show things. Like if I don't want to talk about this today, I just hide it. If I want to talk about it as a facilitator, I turn it on. If I want to turn off that brainstorm icon library, now I could focus everybody on the wall of work. If they start scrolling around, um, I could still summon them back to uh, this wall of work if it's a daily standup. All right, let me hide this. And then we're going to go to notice when I click on the outline, it actually automatically moves me to that section of the board. I'm going to unhide. And um, yeah, so some of you went nuts and, and put some <laughs> post-it notes down here. Uh, but if you like um, tools like uh, draw.io or Visio, <coughs> Mural has a pretty um, unsophisticated uh, version of shapes and, and arrows, but um, it's still pretty good. So I can go here and I can drop a, a circle and then create uh, I'm going to have to, pardon me for one sec. No offense to anybody that put this post it there. I just need, I need my canvas. All right. All right. So I've got this. I'm going to go back here and I am going to draw arrows. And, you know, when I draw that arrow, I can actually pick the next object, right? And if I draw the next connector, Right, so I can document, and I don't have a, a use case right now to show you, but yeah, I could do a process flow, a context diagram, whatever, using the basic shapes and features in here. Yes, you can hand draw um, using the pencil, uh, but what's nice about using the stencil is you know you have to rely on your hand drawing or your handwriting skills. So that's a pretty powerful feature. Turn that off. Let me go to drawing and go here. So here is, um, yep, uh, London. Cool. I'm going to move that over there. I could stack. 
Um, I can, you can actually change the background color of a post-it note so that it's transparent so that you could see the one underneath it if you wanted to. Um, if you would like, uh, go ahead and grab the pencil tool, those of you brave, and just squiggle on the, the screen here. So this is old school uh, physical whiteboard stuff, right? So you can show off your handwriting skills and drawing. I'll zoom it smaller so you can see. Andy, um, is there anything in the chat? Nothing, doesn't look like there's any questions, Joe, sorry. Okay, no, not to be sorry, but I'm glad. I mean, I'm open to any questions, I should say. All right, so folks are having fun drawing and uh, thank you for keeping it, um, uh, Work friendly, thank you. Um, uh, there's uh, so let me show you if, uh, how to. I'm going to go to way down at the bottom here. I'm going to create a new section here. Um, they call them frameworks. What I like about them is you can actually just kind of build a, a an area on the board based on a certain layout. So they've got like a blank layout a title, like a post-it note. Um, you can do grids, lines, a target, um, and then you can place that on the board and then people put their post-it notes or their handwriting inside of that grid or that box. I'm just gonna put a free form thing out here and I'm gonna call it, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna call it new outline section. All right, and I'm gonna size it up. And I am going to highlight it and anything, whoops. Um, if you just click and drag, it'll move the canvas around. If you shift and drag with your mouse, it'll actually select. So now what I'm gonna do, now that I have it selected, I'm gonna right click and I can add it to the outline. And now check that out. I've got a new outline section just on that. So that again, if I've prefabricated my board, I can have these sections ready to go. Um, this outline section's ready to go. And I could add instructions like uh, type in the name of your pet and breed. We're not going to do that today, but you know, that's just an example. Um, and I can hide and show it. I can move sections around. They don't have to be uh, physically left to right, top down. So, you know, this new outline section here, um, which was on the bottom left, I can move it in the outline anywhere I want. So you're not locked into like, the outline being in the same order, left to right on the on the board itself. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through every single feature, but you know, a lot of good stuff in here. So I can do a voting session. Uh, again, I can go into private mode. So if, like at the beginning, when I asked you to brainstorm, I could have went into private mode. And as you were placing your post-it notes on there, no one could see that you were placing your note. Um, eventually, we know who posted what because you can, as a facilitator, I could right click on a post it note and see who put it there. Um, I can um, customize my toolbar. I've got this timer feature, um, which is great. So, if I want to do a time brainstorming, I get to set the timer for one minute, five minutes, or whatever. Uh, here's the default is that airplane noise where you have to put your tray tables up, but you could do other noises too. Um, you can start the timer, stop the timer. That's really cool. Um, 
one last thing I'll show you. Uh, the, so I already showed you the share because that's how you got in. Members are people in your organization already, right? They're already on your domain and they have a license. Visitors is for anybody, anywhere, but I can add passwords. I can set time limits on them. And this other feature here, export. So let's say we find we got this beautiful board and we want to send it out. We want to put it on SharePoint. We want to send it out via email. Um, I can export it as a PDF or as a PNG or as a zip of mural files or whatever. Um, create an embed HTML tag that I could put inside of a website. Um, a lot of great features here, but like PDF and PNG, PDF is probably the best one. Um, that you can export to, and then you can share it with other people and then not worry about deleting the board or erasing the board or versioning the board. You have a PDF edition. Um, now, but it doesn't go the other way. You can't dump something out to a PDF and then later re-import it easily. You have to like redraw things. All right. I know we spent majority of the meeting on Mural, but Mural is... Um, pretty complicated, sophisticated, and I could probably spend hours and hours showing you more and more stuff. Any questions? No questions in the chat, right. except a request to cover whiteboard. You got it. All right, so next up is whiteboard. Um, it's available on the web from HTTPS whiteboard.microsoft.com. As long as you have a Microsoft 365 account, um, paid account typically, uh, you have access to the whiteboard. There's also an app for Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac. It supports digital pen, mouse, trackpad, and tablet input. By the way, Mural does too. So I'm able to scribble on the whiteboard using my iPad with an, um, an Apple Pencil. Or um, if you have a Samsung device with a stylus, um, that's cool too. Or like in this case, I have a touchscreen uh, monitor here. I can actually scribble on my screen and it'll actually make it onto the canvas. Uh, they also support templates. They support drawing and sketching. Most, most tools do. There's some good templates. You can export as a PNG. Um, it's much simpler than Mural. So if you were overwhelmed by what you saw on Mural, start start with Microsoft uh, Whiteboard. I mean, they're both good tools. Um, the web version is typically the one that has the most features and the most um, accessible, if you will. The templates are brainstorming, problem solving, retrospective, there's games and team building, there's strategy, there's workshops. You can draw a sketch, you can attach images from device or from Bing, attach PowerPoint slides. Uh, there's a ruler on the screen that allows you to, if you wanna draw a straight line, you can put the ruler on the screen and then draw with the ruler. Um, ink to shape feature. So if you draw a square, it'll, if you turn on that feature, it'll actually turn the drawing of a square to a square. Or if you draw a circle, it'll actually convert the drawing of a circle to a circle, as long as it can see what it is. Um, a beautify feature, you can handwrite text on the screen, and as long as it's somewhat legible, it'll convert it to a font. Um, you can add sticky notes, all the products support that. You can convert PNG from the past whiteboard session and convert it back to objects that can be updated. So this is somewhat of a two way street. You can uh, take a PNG that you've exported from before and then re-import it. And it has somewhat intelligence to go, oh, I see the objects in the PNG. I'll recreate them for you on a new board. Um, and then it has a lasso tool to move and resize objects, very similar to Miro where I use shift and my mouse to highlight areas. Let's try this one. Eventually. I'm 
I'm going to close my mural. Wow, the board is empty too, and it's taking a while to load. Uh, while this thing's loading, um, any other questions in the chat? Does not look like it. Okay. Here we go. All I had to do was click on try again, and here it is. So um, obviously not as busy of a toolbar on the left, not as much features across the top. You've got um, different color markers here, black, red, green, a uh, highlighter, an eraser, the lasso tool. Um, uh, if you want to get to a select tool, you click on this one. If you want to get to the inking, that's what this is. That's the inking tool. I could turn that on and off. Um, I can also create um, post-it notes, text boxes. I could do shapes and lines. I can get reactions of if I go, hey, if you guys think this is great, give me a thumbs up or whatever, or a heart or whatever. Uh, looks like there's no negative uh, reactions there, which I guess is good. Um, right, so there's a whole bunch of things in here, images, templates, documents. So what I'm going to do is I am going to be brave again. Please behave. I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to go into the chat. All right, so feel free to join me if you're brave enough. Now. With Microsoft Whiteboard, there is no summon. There is no Zoom. There is no, like, I don't know where you are when you join. You guys could be writing really nasty stuff about me in the bottom right corner. I won't see it unless I scroll around. So, uh, again, what's great about Whiteboard is its simplicity, um, which for a basic brainstorming session, whatever, should be plenty, right? Um, but if you want more functionality, mural, Mural or Miro are good alternatives. Um, so I don't know who's joined in here, but if you are brave enough, go ahead and click on the plus and just drop a post-it note in there. You notice there's um, single notes, there's note grids. Any, uh, are folks able to get in or is that link not working? Oh, somebody got in. Anybody else? Or, or are you guys all over the place where I can't see you? I'm gonna go find you. <laughs> Joe, in my case, it was asking for me to sign in with a Microsoft account. Fantastic. Not good. So um, that is the constraint. So with Microsoft, they are Microsoft friendly, right? So if you have a Microsoft account, um, Outlook, Microsoft.com, right, then allows you in there. Uh, but if you are, you have people that are on Gmail or Yahoo or whatever, unless they have a Microsoft account, they're going to have a hard time getting in. Within your own company or within your own network, if you already are a Microsoft 365 organization, easy to exchange stuff within the company. But this is the downside of, of this tool is because it's very narrow to Microsoft. Much like Google Jamboard would be for anybody that has a Gmail account. Uh, but similar kinds of things here. You can use the pen. You can erase. I can highlight things. I can go in here and drop um, some really cool templates. So there's a brainstorming template, um, mood boards, brainstorm, uh, problem solving, um, uh, an Ishikawa root cause and effect diagram, research strategy, 
Yeah, the one thing I didn't cover a lot in the mural, there's a whole bunch of templates in there for like uh, um, a business model canvas. So if you want to brainstorm on a new business idea or product idea, uh, you can use the business model canvas. There's some um, really good templates in here as well. Project plan, daily stand up, right? Uh, doing, done, uh, block, whole bunch of things in here. But again, the Microsoft tool is very uh, basic. Let me just drop a brainstorm thing in here and size it bigger. And then if we wanted to drop some ideas in there. So you can brainstorm with your team. Uh, when you have a finished product, you can, whoops, so there's that share again. I can also export the, the board as a uh, PNG, standard resolution for email, because of the file size or high resolution if you want to get every single detail. You click on export, it generates a PNG and you can email it. The, um, I could change the background. You know, if I wanted a grid or a square or a different color, maybe I want to use a company color or something closer, that's pretty cool. Uh, I can, um, uh, they do have uh, onboarding tools. If your company, if you've purchased Microsoft 365 and your company has the app installed, uh, the desktop app installed, you can open the same board in the app. Again, the feature set on the web is the most robust compared to the app. Here's that enhanced ink shapes automatically. So let me go to a different part of the board. I'm gonna go get a marker. And if I draw, pretend to draw a square, I hope it works. Notice how what it did there. I draw a circle, yeah, terrible handwriting. It goes, nope, oh, and I didn't finish the connection, so it doesn't, didn't recognize it as a complete circle. How's that? All right, so that's a nice little feature there too. So if you are, you just want to hand draw some symbols, there's a triangle. I, I'll, um, I'm not an artist, uh, but that's a nice feature too. Again, this is a super simple tool, easy for most meetings, great entry level if you wanted to start with something. Um, and then later, if you want to advance to a Miro or a mural, um, you can. Um, any uh, questions in the chat? Uh, yes, there's a couple. Um, okay. It says, is that brainstorm template something that you can you have created or is that template provided by Microsoft? It's provided by Microsoft. You, um, Mural will let you create templates and content library. Microsoft, um, unless you have it as an image, um, you can't like import it. But this one that was here, this is one that they've created. So all these templates are theirs. Good question. Anything, any other questions out there? Not that I'm seeing, no. Okay. There was one additional question. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, nope, that's okay. And I, I just wanted to get some clarification around um, who you can invite to collaborate. Does uh, whoever you're inviting, do they need to be in your tenancy um, to be able to collaborate? Is that the issue that we're all having? In the Microsoft whiteboard, I believe it's it favors anybody in your org that has the whiteboard access. Um, you're actually your system admin could grant um, whiteboard access to certain people in the organization, not everybody, but typically it's within the Microsoft 365 account. Um, and like with this version, I think I can have people outside that have their own Microsoft accounts 
join this board. I, so some of you were able to join because you had a Microsoft account or um, or or um, created one. Uh, yeah, I think a number of us have Microsoft accounts, but we still were not able to join for some reason. Yeah, and the, and and the, the the answer I won't give you a complete one is complicated. There's <laughs> firewall security, what your company allows you to do outside. Like, I I I'm not an expert. I can't explain it. Okay, thank you. This is where great question though. So this I'm kind of showing you what it's like to invite people. So don't you know. Don't plan a hundred person meeting <laughs> your first time in whiteboard or mural. Practice, get a couple people together, shake out any issues, security or access wise, skill wise, and then go for the big, big, uh, big thing. But you raise a good point. I, and I, I think it's your mileage may vary. Okay. Now with mural, <clears throat> what's beautiful about mural is they're not tied to Gmail or Microsoft or Yahoo or whatever. Um, anybody can get to it. And you can have a free account, no account, um, or within the domain or within the company account. And uh, each one of those has varying um, levels of security and access. So if, if you really are working with people from lots of different companies, Mural is probably a better solution. But it's more complicated. Thank you. But if you're all in the family or you're all within one company, the whiteboard thing on Microsoft works great. And it's available inside of Teams. You could snap it into Teams. There's actually a whiteboard inside each Teams meeting that you schedule. So there's a, and it stays inside that meeting, um, which is cool, right? So if you wanna go back three weeks, oh, remember that brainstorming we did three weeks ago in Teams? Yeah, yeah. Well, the whiteboard is still available and it's inside that meeting, right? So people can go back to it if they want to. Good question, thank you. Any other questions out there? We got a couple minutes left. That seems to cover the questions. I don't see any new ones. Uh, if I missed your question from earlier, please speak up. Don't seem to have anything, Joe. Okay, great. So let me wrap up and um, turn you guys back loose on your um, your work. Actually, Joe, there was a question that just came in. How okay. do you save your whiteboard to share it with others? Oh, so in Microsoft, you would do the export image. And then you pick the standard resolution or high res and then export and it'll actually create a, a PNG file. It's hidden behind my toolbar here. Um, and then you could take that PNG and put it up on SharePoint, send it in an email, wherever you want. Uh, but they only support PNG. They don't, it doesn't export to PDF or any other file format. But the PNG is basically a picture. So you can take that picture and stick it in a Microsoft Word doc or a PowerPoint if you want. I hope that answered the question. OK, any other questions? There are not. All right, cool. So um, you'll get this in an email from me this weekend. Uh, but this is the, you can claim your own PDUs for those of you that are credentialed. Um, you can get one technical PDU for attending this event today. That's the PDU uh, 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 code C048B2VENI. Um, come visit us. Come visit the website again. We got a lot more meetings coming. We got a really good good year um, project of the year presentation next week. Uh, we've got a virtual job fair at the end of March. We've got more tech webinars. We are always looking for people to do what I did today and present tools that they use at work. Um, you know, ideally, we would want practitioners, people actually using the tools, sharing the tools. So if you've got something you want to share, please contact me or a VP of programs and we'll get you connected. Uh, that would be great. 
uh, but also just attend um, our future meetings. We'd love to see you. All right. Thank you very much. It was uh, great spending the hour with you. And if you have any other questions after you get my emails or whatever, just shoot, shoot them back to me and I'd be happy to answer them when I can. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Joe.